Now we take a look at the Start 3D printer. The Start is a Cartesian style machine from iMaker. It has a 140 by 120 by 130 millimeter build volume, a Bowden MK8 style extruder setup, an all acrylic frame, a non-heated build platform, and a part cooling fan. This machine is actually a rebranded Tronxy XY100 printer. The Start is right at $99 US, while the Tronxy version is about $30 more. This printer was built during a live stream with my Uncle Brian doing most of the assembly. Everything did go pretty smooth, it took us about 6.5 hours to get it together and get a Benchy printed. That does allow about 2 hours for the Benchy's print time. Let's get one of the key points of this kit out of the way first. It only costs $99. My guess is at that price, this is about the company's break even point. There are 5 stepper motors in this kit. That's almost half the cost of this machine right there. This kit resembles a scaled down ANET A8. They have a very similar construction. To give you an idea of the scale of this machine, it can sit comfortably on a CR10 build plate. There really isn't a whole lot about this kit that jumps out at me that would necessarily be called a pro. The build guide on the SD card is pretty good, it has a Melzi controller board, it's very quiet, it does have a part cooling fan, and since there's no heated bed, the whole thing can be powered by a brick, which makes things a lot safer. Here's a somewhat obstructed view of the controller board. It's the same one that Trunksy uses on the X1 kit. It does have adjustable stepper drivers and support for a heated bed if you want to add one later. You also get quite a few spare parts and this not so functional but yet still very cool 3D printed wrench. I do think this kit would be good for somebody that wanted to learn about the nuts and bolts of 3D printing. There are a few larger assemblies in this kit, but most of it you do have to assemble yourself. It'd be a great project for a younger person and their parent maybe. With that said, there's really not a lot of cons either. It's not a great kit, but it does what it's supposed to do. As much as I don't like the phrase, it is what it is, that's kind of what we have here. There's really no gotchas with this kit, you don't have to repair anything to get it to print. It is acrylic, I wouldn't move it around much. It's got the clicky control buttons with Repetier host firmware on it, that's not all that intuitive. You also don't get a copy of that firmware. There's no heat bed, and they have you print on this fiberboard sheet that doesn't stick to things very well. The glue stick still works. There wasn't a lot of fine tuning involved to get this machine to print. It did pretty well right after assembly. The biggest modification that I could recommend for you to make would be some belt holders and some belt tensioners. This would go a long way in improving this machine, and anything would be better than the zip tie method that it comes with stock. There's really no good way of tensioning the belts. This would greatly improve the model quality as well. I wouldn't go printing a lot of ABS or flexible filament with this kit, but PLA and PET will be just fine. I even printed some nylon just to say I did. The first Benchy went home with Uncle Brian, but the second Benchy turned out just as well. Not the worst Benchy I've ever seen, not the best. I found this torture cube and I wanted to see how this printer would take it on. Besides the stringing, I think it passed the test very well. Look at those overhangs. I wanted to throw a lot of different things at this printer. This is PET at 240C. Not too bad. These are some of the interesting example models that came on the SD card. I tried a couple of vase models as well. This is about as tall as the printer can go. This one is PLA, and this one is PET. PET looks really good. It's translucent. The next question is, if I was looking for a 3D printer, would I buy this one? Would I? Probably not. If you've seen one sub $200 acrylic 3D printer, you've seen them all. But if I absolutely had to spare every dollar while purchasing a 3D printer, but be able to print small but at a decent quality? Absolutely! I'll say it again, it's only $99. It's not the greatest kit ever, but it prints pretty well out of the box, and it could be improved on really easily. Even if you didn't build the printer kit, you would have spare parts for projects. It's that cheap! Now that this review's done and on the books, I mentioned it before, but this machine is going to be Uncle Brian's first 3D printer. I have a few intro to 3D printing videos out there already, but I think I'll make another one that Brian can use as reference in case he gets stuck later. It could be helpful for others as well down the road, so stay tuned for that one. 
I hope you found this video helpful. I have not been in contact with iMaker on this machine. This machine was purchased with my own funds and all opinions expressed are my own. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below and as always, thanks for watching.